Choose Empire and get free or low-cost benefits for the whole family. Pay little to nothing from baby's first checkup to filling your prescriptions all the way to yearly dental exams. Trust Empire Health Plans for your family. Click or tap the banner to learn more. To learn more about applying for health insurance, including Medicaid, Child Health Plus, Essential Plan, and Qualified Health Plans through New York State of Health, the official health plan marketplace, visit www.nystateofhealth.ny.gov or call 1-855-355-5777. Hi, welcome to Metro by T-Mobile. Hi, my dad is in serious need of an upgrade. Yeah, my phone's a fossil. He needs a new phone and a new network stat. Well, when he switches to Metro, he can get an amazing iPhone 7 with HD Retina display for just $99.99 after ID validation. Wow, $99.99? Bye-bye, Fossil. Requires porting of eligible number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or active on Metro in past 90 days. With validation of ID, an independent database limit for per account slash household. 32 gigabyte model only. See store for details and terms and conditions. Welcome to the Film Entrepreneur Podcast, episode number two. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. Mark Twain. This is the Film Entrepreneur Podcast, where we teach you the top strategies, tactics, and growth hacks that every indie filmmaker needs to know to make money with their films. We are the podcast that puts the business back into show business. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my film entrepreneurs, to another episode of the Film Entrepreneur Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Black Box. Now, guys, as film entrepreneurs, we're always looking for a little bit of side cash, a little bit of extra revenue streams, and Black Box does that in spades. What they do is allows you to sell your stock footage, you know, footage that's sitting around in your hard drive from old shoots or stuff that you're actually creating for the stock footage market, but it allows you to submit to all the stock footage platforms at once. It handles all the technical submitting and also payments so you can get all your payments out of one platform as opposed to going to all these other places and signing up everywhere. It does it all for you. I've created a really, really nice revenue stream from Black Box and it is a passive revenue stream, which is amazing. So if you want to check it out, head over to blackbox.global to find out more. The show is also sponsored by my new book, Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, How to Turn Your Independent Film into a Money-Making Business. In it, I discuss how to actually create the film entrepreneur model and how to make money with your film or films and do it again and again so you can actually build a successful career and business. So if you want to pre-order the book, head over to filmbizbook.com. That's filmbizbook.com. Now, guys, today on the show, we have the definition of a film entrepreneur. And not in the way that you guys are probably thinking. Today on the show, we have filmmaker Isaac Nabwana from Ramon Film Productions in Uganda. Now you're thinking, Uganda? I'm like, yes, Uganda. He is a creator of Wakaliwood. Now, Wakaliwood is basically an entire industry. It's basically the film industry of Uganda. And this man has started it and created just over, I think at this point, over 40 feature films that he not only creates for a budget of about $200 each, but then he sells them door to door in his community, makes a profit, and supports tens if not hundreds of people in his village and community by doing these films. He understands his niche audience. He creates product for that audience. And it's such a, they're so much fun, these films, you know, which are, you know, you have to watch them and you'll have to see them on uh, at the show notes. And I'll give you that at the end of the show where you can see trailers for their films that they've actually grown. They have a super fan, as they call it, the super fan base around the world where now he's selling his movies internationally. He's selling product lines. He's selling ancillary products and all sorts of things all because of his film entrepreneur spirit. Now, we go deep into how he does it, and I I mean, I can't even tell you the stories of what he had to go through to be able to make his movies. When he just basically picked up a a prosumer video camera when he was first starting out, where he taught, and then he also taught himself how to edit on Adobe 1.5, Adobe Premiere 1.5, and how he taught himself, because he didn't have internet connection at the time, 
he was he learned from the help files the help files he read them and taught himself how to edit how to do his own visual effects and adobe after effects one of the very early versions of it in it's just such a passionate story like this man loves films and you know he just wanted to go out there and make it but he had to do it in a way that he could make money or else he could not make it he didn't have the luxury to do it on a side hustle or do it as a hobby. In the world that he comes from, in the village that he lives in Uganda, it's very poor. He doesn't have the job opportunities and the, 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 the resources that we here in the state or in the West have. So he had to be much smarter about how he was making his films, then also think about how he was gonna sell them and how to turn this into a real business. And not only has he turned it into a business, he's turned it into an industry. He literally has created the film industry in his country. It is a remarkable story how he's able to do a theatrical release in his village and in his cities there in Uganda and how he sells it door to door, how he has his actors be part of the sales force and how he pays his actors. I mean, it's just an amazing, amazing story. And the episode is going to be with Isaac and Wakaliwood's number one super fan, Alan Hoffmanis, who is a uh, American guy who was watching the trailer for uh, the most successful film that Isaac did, Who Killed Captain Alex, in a bar in New York, and he decided at that moment to literally drop everything he was doing, got a ticket, and went hunting for this guy, and moved to Uganda, and now has become part of the tribe there, part of the, of what they do all the time. So it's going to be Alan and Isaac talking. And we're going to go right into this interview. There's not going to be a lot of pleasantries right away because they had just had a flood the night before and there was sewage that overspilled everywhere. And Alan had to literally walk across sewage barefoot with his laptop to go to Isaac's house so we can do this interview. That is the reality of where these guys are. And that they're able to not only do what they love to do, but actually make money doing it and support not only their family, friends, and community, but an entire industry is insane and the true definition of being a film entrepreneur. So without any further ado, please enjoy my inspirational conversation with Alan and Isaac. I'll walk you through this. So, you know, it's a slum, so that's raw sewage in the front. Mm -hmm. and there was a heavy rain, so it floods. That means sewage comes into where I live, mm -hmm. and I cannot find my shoes because it's dark, so I'm walking around in the kind of the sewage kind of thing in my bare feet, nice. and I'm coming up to Isaac. Nice. It's, it's the real deal, wow. deal man. <laughs> it's it's okay. real deal. Here yeah. we go. Cody. Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay, we're with Isaac. Isaac, how are you, my friend? I'm okay. How are you? Oh, thank you so much for doing the interview. I really appreciate it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's get started, guys. I saw your, you know, I saw your, um, that little doc that they did over at Vice, and that kind of introduced okay. me to your world. And then I've gone deep yeah. down the rabbit hole of Wak Wakaliwood. <laughs> <laughs> so I've uh, I've been obsessing about you guys uh, ever since I saw that. So I reached out to Alan, and uh, I'm so grateful that you guys decided to, to jump on the interview. I think you yeah. you're an inspirational story, uh, and I hope uh, my crowd will never ever complain about making films in Los Angeles after they hear your story. <laughs> <laughs> so um so first off alan uh, how did you tell me the story of how you ended up in uganda yeah it's you know to me it's very simple and easy but i i don't think uh, people think i'm crazy um <laughs> so i i was living in new york my background is in film and film production and then also i was a festival program director for a number of years and uh so a friend just showed me a trailer, just 90 seconds uh, from YouTube. It was the trailer for Who Killed Captain Alex. Mm -hmm. um, and he showed it to me on his iPhone in a bar. And you know, everyone's laughing you know, this, and, and I wasn't laughing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, meaning you know, it's crazy and it's fun yeah, and all sure. this. But, but uh, it looked to me, I didn't understand it, meaning it, it, look, it looked like something, there's a story here. Not like in a documentary sense, although yes, but in like, I wanted to know more. I wanted to, I wanted to know more. Okay. And um and that's it. And so two weeks later, 
I just I just came to Uganda, and wow. I didn't call, I didn't email. <laughs> you uh, just show, you just show, you just literally showed up. Yeah, 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 and that's it. And I knew I would find them because uh, it it seemed like the the personality behind that was just very strong. It was like uh-huh. very big. So I knew I knew people would know him. You know, right? Um, if, if it was a quiet film, two people having a conversation, or you know, that that's a little different. But this, I knew it. I knew I'd find them. So, um, and that was it. It was actually my my first full day there. I found them. So it's yeah. This is definitely not dinner with Andre. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely yeah he, yeah I got I got, so that's extremely exciting and brave of you. Like it's something that I know a lot of people uh, would not just like. Hey, let's just get on the boat and go to uh, go to Uganda and see if I can find this filmmaker. So that alone is but, a story you know in what, itself. But you know what's funny about that though? It's like it's like you know I, I I thought about all this. Yeah, mm-hmm. actually, what I did was I bought the ticket. And then I returned it the next day because this is crazy. But then the next day I bought it again <laughs> uh, and I had to pay the fees. Of course. But it's because like, – but I thought actually I thought it would be crazier not to come really. I, I thought if I did not come, I would always Regret wonder it. or always want to know. You know, So, you know, yeah, I, I guess so. But it was uh, – it was. <laughs> I thought it out somehow. So Isaac, let me ask you a question. What triggered your passion to become a director uh, and open up a studio in Uganda? Yeah, I, I would say it is art because uh, uh, when I was young, we liked you know we did martial arts. Okay. And, and the, the, it was uh, it was we wanted to do a uh, movie movies by that but uh, but we didn't know how, what to do. But what we knew is uh, uh, if we do martial arts like uh, Chinese uh, kung fu, mm-hmm. it would be it would be very simple. And uh, uh, personally, I was an artist like in. As in drawing, and I, from childhood, I used to draw comics in a mm-hmm. book. Mm-hmm. I would draw, you know, football match, the whole pages of the book, 32 pages, and I draw a goalkeeper getting the ball, you know, doing it. So I knew how to use the drawings, but make it, you know, like it's a moving something. Okay. It's a story. In it. So uh, from childhood, I knew that. And uh, uh, I think that is when it, when I wanted that to make my pictures, you know, move. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I, I started, you know, doing martial arts, I knew that I was one day I will make a movie. Uh, but uh, my brother was not believing me, and he was <laughs> always saying that you need a lot of a lot of money to right. make a movie. Right. Yeah, I think also, uh, you, you know, it is passion. You, you you love something, and then you follow it. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did. I, I had to follow my dream. Good. Um, that that alone is 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 an inspirational story. Just that alone, without the rest of the story, because um, a lot of people don't follow their dreams, uh, especially over here. They get caught up in the day of living and not actually following their dreams and figuring out how to get that dream to be a business, which is what you guys have done. Uh, you've been doing this for eight years, right, Isaac? About eight years. And how many films? And how many films have you made so far? The truth is, I cannot say uh, these movies because I've, in fact, I've worked on several projects, but uh, uh, around forty movies, around four, so, above forty movies. So yeah. you've made more movies. So you've made more movies than Steven Spielberg. Very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Spielberg, George Lucas, James Cameron of Uganda. Oh, absolutely! Throw in some David Fincher and Michael Bay in there while you're at it. <laughs> Right, Bruce Lee. You know, exactly. So, um, so Isaac, what films inspired you growing up? Yeah, there are so many movies. Uh, as I as I was growing up, I never went to cinema halls uh, because I was obedient to my parents. But my <laughs> brothers used to, to 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 go out and you know escape and go to cinema halls. They come back, they tell you stories, right. and really those stories are still in my head. And I've never seen even some of the movies. Uh, they used to tell me like the bad dispensers movies because they are, there's nowhere to get them here in Uganda. Right. Uh, but I I, I I I know bad dispenser by 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 the story that my brothers used to tell me. But now I've uh-huh. never watched him. I, I don't know even how he looks like. But but so there are so many movies like uh, the Presence Man of Chuck Norris was mm-hmm. good. Wild Geese I think by James Bond. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wang Yu's movies and Bruce Lee's movies. Uh-huh. Uh, Chuck, uh, you know uh, the Commando of Schwarzenegger. Oh, uh, yeah. John Rambo's movies. There are so many movies which were, in fact, were told by by my brothers. Mm-hmm. But I never watched. I saw them by. I mean, when they released, when they were released here in Uganda. I never saw the movies, but I got the stories from my brothers. Wow! So you literally watched movies through secondhand stories. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tell you, those guys were very good storytellers. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's amazing. So, um, so, so when you saw the movies, they were boring to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like this is horrible. What is, what is this Chuck Norris guy doing? Ah, oh, this is horrible. It's my, my brothers tell much better stories. <laughs> Uh, Isaac, where do you get the ideas for your films? Because they are very, they're very unique to your, to your, to Uganda and to your, and to your culture. Yeah, there are some things which I think are making them st- unique. Uh, maybe it's the way they are, I write them, but I, I, I normally want the life we go through plus some fiction anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how I make the movies. But the most important thing is that we are family here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sit together sometimes uh, after writing a script. Uh, we sit together and discuss the script which I've written. Uh, you know, the, all people have got ideas to contribute. And another thing is that uh, I try to see that in the script I write, everyone is is, is in, in is in that in the, is in the in the script uh, has to act. So I write for everyone who is here, who is around mm-hmm. me. Wow. So that really makes it, you know, different from movies from West, uh, being that you see, like, uh, let me give an example of Commando. Mm-hmm. It was written for Schwarzenegger. Sure. And you can see that. Yeah, but for me, I don't write for one person. I write for everyone who is here. And I look at them. I see a character in him or her. And then I try to, uh, you know, to put her in that movie, to fix her in that movie. So I think that really makes it unique. Uh, and being that it's a, a combination of film stars, I think it has to be unique all over the world. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So basically, from what I'm, from what I've gathered, what I've watched online, and and talking to you, it's basically what Hollywood's like. It's an infant. It's a. It's in its infancy almost. It's almost like a way was in the in the turn of the century uh, in L. A. in Hollywood, or, or, or when they were making the silent movies, they were figuring things out. They didn't have any access to a lot of information. So they were just trying to figure stuff out. And, and you guys have been kind of doing that with Wakali would have. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we always figure out something <laughs> and then we do it. It's like uh, we, we, we are always improvising. <laughs> You're doing it. And that's where great art is made. It's like when you don't know, like uh, there's a lot of filmmakers um, – I'm not sure if you know who Robert Rodriguez is. Uh, I know Alan probably does, uh, but he was a, a filmmaker who kind of just did stuff on his own. And he was very similarly like, oh, what do I have access to? I'm going to just go, oh, I have access to a turtle, a dog, and a, and a town, and a couple guns. Let's go make a movie. Uh, yes. And that's kind of what I'm hearing from you, but at a much more communal sense, uh, much more you know, yeah. based around the entire uh, family. Yeah. Now, how... Now, how did you teach yourself editing and visual effects, Isaac? Because this is a complicated process. I'm, I was fascinated to see some of the behind the scenes. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, at first, uh, I remember when I was trying to do the special effects and visuals, I, I there's a, a movie called Solo. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think you know that. Yes, yeah, the is one with, Solo, um, is, this, is that the one with Kurt Russell? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I no, no, cut, there was another one. Yeah, 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 I think I know what you're talking about, yeah. I, I used to cut fire from that movie uh, to see that I paste on something and then see if it burns, something like that. Then right alone, I thought of something and then I said, yes, green screen. Because I was reading uh, Adobe Premiere. It was 1.5, oh, wow. uh, which I started yeah. teaching myself. Uh, I read the, I used the help button of Adobe Premiere 1.5. It's like a book you read and understand. It was not very easy to understand, but because of the art and creativity, which I think is in me, I, 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 don't, I don't think I got it from anywhere. It is a God-given. So I, I started using that, uh, the, the, the ideas, and then I see the fire. I, I figure, I find, how did they do it? When I learned in that Premiere Pro, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Premiere Pro 1 from 5, that there is chroma key, mm-hmm. I started using a green screen. In fact, I have a, a wall here which I painted green. Okay. Uh, in his house. Painted oh. the walls in his house. Painted chroma key. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I noticed that. I started shooting a put blood. I, I noticed that in one of your interviews. I, I actually saw the the back cross. Like, is that chroma key green back there? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's green. That's green. Yeah, that's chroma green screen. So I started putting fire in front of it, and then I I, I go and chroma I key it. Then and I use it. So uh, later on, I studied um, a, a difficult uh, software. It was called combustion because when I had combustion, combustion because yeah, that's, in, in the past uh, when I was in school, 
Uh-huh. I used to learn, I used to, I, I was a very good student of physics. So I knew I got combustion from there. Mm-hmm. So I, I knew it, is, it has to be fire in it mm-hmm. if it is combustion. <laughs> so I started also using combustion. <laughs> Studying combustion was not an easy thing. Of right. all softwares I've, 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 I've meant, combustion is very, very, very difficult. It but is. it helped me very much in making smoke, uh, in hooking Captain Alex. In fact, that's what I used mm-hmm. to make smoke and uh, and also some fire, you know, muzzles, something like that. So I I, I combined uh, Adobe. By that by that time, I didn't know After Effects when I was doing After right. uh, I mean hooking Captain Alex. Mm-hmm. I knew. Adobe Premiere Pro 1.5, but I didn't know After Effects. I learned After Effects later. Right, right. But you were using combustion to do the visual effects in that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that and, you know, and, he's learning. Go ahead. He's learning without uh, at that time. This is before we had internet here. Yeah. Right. So it's not like he has like YouTube tutorials or anything. Yeah, that was it's a. All tri- or, or if there's even someone who knows that that can teach him. Right. There isn't any. No, of course, there's no one in in, in, in probably within a thousand miles. <laughs> <laughs> that could yeah. teach them premiere at that point in the game. That's and combustion. Yeah. And combustion. No, actually, I've I've actually opened up combustion back in the day, and it was complicated. That's why I don't use it. <laughs> it was really it was a really complicated program for the day, especially if you have no background in visual effects or or software or anything like that. So that's amazing. That really is remarkable, Isaac. That the the thing I love about your story so much is that there is so much passion behind what you guys are doing back, doing in Uganda and with Wakaliwood is that there is that so much passion and it's raw passion. It's not jaded passion. It's not, oh, how am I going to make this? Or that? It's just, you just love what you're doing. And that's what drew me to you guys. Uh, and I think, I think as the word gets out about what you guys are doing, that's what I think your fans are going to start drawing you more and more because that passion is something you can't manufacture. You can't make that. Like you can't put, go into a marketing, uh, strategic marketing campaign and go, "How can we create passion?" You know, fake passion. Like <laughs> it, it doesn't work. People know the difference, and that passion yeah. of what you guys are doing is so real and so raw that it's, um, it's infectious. Actually, it's actually infectious. Uh, kind of like your Ebola movie, but. Uh, <laughs> 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 so um have you um now Alan have you guys been submitting to film festivals? Uh we were rejected by everything uh for Alex. Wow. Uh you know domestically but also like uh Japan I thought we might have a chance no. Um even like there was a festival uh it wasn't say the first choices but there were festivals that are just dedicated to poverty even. Sure. Like, uh, you know for, like ultra no budget Any and, angle, and right. all they wanted and and they were rejected outright from everything. Um some of them, I think, thought that we were fake, that this isn't real. Like They, were, they, they would ask me, instead of saying no, they would ask me, uh, how much does Isaac charge for interviews? And I didn't understand what they meant, but I think right. it's because they thought this is just a joke, that this is a scam. Wow. Um, so we were rejected outright. I understand my background is, you know, as a, as a program director for festivals. Right. Um, everything rejected. And you, went, um, and you went after all the big, big and small festivals here in the States as well, and yeah, genre-based. Yeah, you know, it, yeah, yeah, because that's how I want to present it. Is what it is. It's, it's genre. It's action, and horror, action, yeah, sure. comedy, and horror. Yeah. Um, and so, but at the same time, you know, he's got all these millions and millions of of views. You know, mm-hmm. um, and I knew that there were all these fan clubs. There's a fan. There's a paintball team. This is before we went public with Alex. Mm-hmm. But there were like there was like a paintball team in Berlin. There's a fan club in like Indonesia, and these are all spontaneous. Like these are just fans who see the clips and organize. Right. Um. So we just kind of made the decision, let, let's, let's just release it straight to the fans, make it free, bring it to the fans. Right. Um, and, then, and then that's what happened. And once it got out and then people started seeing it, you know, uh, they just fell in love. And, that, and that's what's been happening these past six months is it just building and building. Um, but I can tell you in the beginning, people would tell me like, uh, oh, the films are violent. And I'm like, well, I mean, I don't know how to answer that. They, you know, to me, they're like Road Warrior cartoons, yeah. uh, Road Runner cartoons. Right, right. You know, it's it's it's, it's they're comedies, there's laughter, but they would say like this is a promoting violence in Africa, or you know, all all these kinds yeah. of things without seeing the movie. Right. You know. Right. Um, I don't know. So at the, at the end, you know, we had all these millions of views. So we just we just released it to the fans, and then I think the rest is the rest may be history. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. that's the smartest way I think you guys could have gone about it is actually yeah. just like, hey, yeah. just just let's show it up. And then 
yeah, create that fan base, and then you can figure out how yeah. to monetize later, um, which is what yeah. you guys are doing. And then, uh, because also, and then we have because there's also the new movies. I mean, and again, this is a studio, meaning we have about uh, twelve, I think around twelve films in an action horror cycle. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they have to be subtitled. They have to, you know, uh, and, and things. But we have them. You know, and so. The next step is yeah, with, with with maybe potentially then for the next movies to release them with a in conjunction with a film festival. Mm-hmm. Um, with the dream being just to get Isaac and maybe some of the actors to the West, right? You Which know, I think Isaac has never actually been to a theater. Oh wow! Yeah. That, I mean, yeah, he's never, you, to- he's never been to a, Isaac. You never been to a like a a, a movie theater before. No, no, no. I've never been there. Uh, apart from this in, uh, cinema halls, which are here now, the local one, and I go there for for a VJ. That's sure, that's right. But I've never, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a TV set, like a you know, nineteen inch TV set. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys about how can can you walk me through that screening process at the local screening hall because I saw a little bit of, uh, about that in the behind the scenes documentary, and I want people to understand what it's like and how different it is the experience with the commentary. <laughs> With the VJ, yeah, the VJ, yeah. How can you explain to the audience what's that? What's that process? Yeah, a VJ. After making a movie, mm-hmm. uh, I take it to the uh, the VJ. Uh, he has a cinema hall. That is a small cinema hall, local one, and um, he has a mixer. Uh, he, he has a DVD. I mean, a, D, a, a, a TV, mm-hmm. and uh, he has a banner which can which burns the DVDs. So. Uh, what he does, he has a microphone. He mixes the. He starts playing the the the, the, the what the, the film on a screen, and people. Are, he has audience, of course. Sometimes he has not have audience if it's if it's just recording for maybe selling uh, for TV or something like that. But he is on a microphone. He he pulls back the he pulls off the the, the sound of the the movie, mm-hmm. and then he talks, and then. He, he, he brings it back and it's like that. You hear him saying, oh, it's a movie. And then, it's, and then it comes in. Something like that. And he cuts the, what, the sound and then he talks. Something like that. And he's, he's always joking, you know. Right. <laughs> he's so, always joking and adding some, you know, jokes. And he all, he's also on point sometimes. And he goes off and then he takes. It's like he's underlating, but also in a joking type, in a, in a joking way. Right, right. Yeah. And, and that makes it a much more enjoyable experience for the audience. Of course, everyone goes mad when he, when he starts because he's always live. You know, he brings in you know that you know that happiness in him after because he watches the movie. First time he watches the movie before you watch, he, 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 he does what he vigor it. Mm-hmm. He has to watch it, understand the movie. So after understanding everything, he knows where to put a joke. He knows where to to to, to, to you know to wow. guide you something like that. Yeah. So you guys should actually do a uh, a, a, a special release of uh, your movies with him talking through the commentary. Oh, you mean like you mean, like, uh, you mean like a VJ version of the film? Yeah, or? you should. You should do that. That would be because Alex, that, man. Yeah, that would be that would be an awesome experience uh, for people to to kind of feel to be in that room. Would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have uh, the first one that's the. We trans we tried to translate it into English, mm-hmm. which was tough because because Emmy did not speak English, our VJ. Right. Um, so we did, so Captain Alex is like the first, as I guess, is the first film in the world mm-hmm. uh, with a Ugandan VJ. Oh, Alex is oh, so the the full movie has the VJ already on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, that's the full, awesome. yeah, and, you know, it's free. It's on YouTube. It's all you know, Wakaliwood dot com. It's free. You can download it there. But no, Alex has uh, I think the world's first English language. DJ, <laughs> that's brilliant. On it. That's brilliant. So, Alan, uh, 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 go ahead, Alan. I was going to say, like, like just to follow what, what Isaac was saying is that I, I've seen, you know, the video hall. It could be like it's a dirt floor with some wooden benches and usually two television screens. One mm-hmm. is the movie, and one is playing a soccer game with the volume down. So, if you don't like the movie, you can just watch sports. <laughs> um, but I have seen, like, I don't know, like oh, yeah. 130 people. Standing on the bench, instead of they're not sitting, they're standing on the benches, jumping up and down in the pouring rain on the steel corrugated roof with a diesel generator running all the power, oh. just screaming loud at Isaac's films with the loud VJ. Just wow. it's just complete madness. Um, and so no, we fought very hard. Like, how do we kind of translate this experience uh into the West, at least partially? 
Right. Um, and it's not, you know, so, so I think we succeeded on, on, on a basic level. Mm-hmm. It's tough because also, I mean, the, the VJ invents his own language, mm-hmm. it, you know, its own kind of slang. So it's not exactly easy to translate it, but I think we got something. The, uh, something came through. Something came through. Oh, yeah. So, Alan, how does it feel to be an action star in Uganda? <laughs> well, it's, well, right now I'm I'm more Jesus, um, <laughs> for real. And my hair my hair's grown out, and I have this beard. Before I was the commando uh, in black and things, which right. will be coming out in the West. Um, but now my hair is grown out, so I'm more Jesus, right. and that's my name here for real. I ended up playing Jesus in a music video as a favor, and it turned out to be like the number one song here in Uganda. Oh my god. Um, so so yeah, it's and then and then you know I have to I have to start dressing better because you know well you you expect uni- Jesus to have some some well, some level. Well, it's easy, you know. It's not hard. It's not easy to find Jesus, let alone uh, in Uganda walking around. So I guess you you should be able to get a lot of work. Yeah, well, it's been two thousand years. Yeah, well, it's been two thousand years coming, you know. And um, you know, I'm very happy to be here. It's why uh, and, and, and you came to support- and you came to Waka Hollywood. So that's awesome. Exactly. <laughs> He loves action, you know, and uh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> he loves to blow stuff up with nothing else. And obviously, so I, this is where he's changed since the olden days. <laughs> well, it's boring after a while, man. I mean, you know, there's only so much you some can of do. these other countries. They're, they're cool and all, but <laughs> <laughs> so um, now you guys did a Kickstarter campaign recently, and you were asking for 160 bucks. How much did you finally get at the end of that? Um, I think we got, we got just over uh, 13,000. Oh, that's amazing. And, yeah. And it was, um, and that, and this is in the very beginning, this is before, I guess it kind of went viral. I guess it went viral. I don't know. We're, we're here, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, <Right. laughs> uh, we're here. Um, but yeah. And, and you know, 160 is what the budgets more or less are, mm-hmm. uh, for the films. And so ultimately that, that's all we kind of needed for the next one. But yeah, we raised, uh, over 13 grand. Wow. Wow. And then as each movie that goes along, you keep building up more of, uh, of, of equipment and arsenals and things like that that you can keep using for other movies. So it just kind of like compounds itself, correct? Yeah, uh, of course. And also like when we're working on, uh, on Alex before, there were no backups. Like this, we now have had our first backup hard drives. Oh, thank God. Give you an idea. <laughs> so you, you, know, you, you just backed it up. You've seen, yeah. And I don't know if you've seen pictures, but, uh, you know, we're building a damn helicopter. Yeah, I saw. Like, yeah, you sent me a picture of that the other day. Scrap, and that, that, that's your Kickstarter dollars at work. <laughs> now, um, what were the first things that you guys bought with that money? Oh, it was it was it was technical. As soon as, as soon as the first person that I knew was in the area from the west, it was hard drives. Oh, really? And like video cards and sound cards, um, because you just burn through those. Oh, really? U- UPS, like the power regulators uh, for electricity, all stuff like that. Um, was trying, the first trying and to, the second thing was yeah and, and, trying to build the infrastructure right, after right. That, yeah 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 um well it was the upgrade you try to upgrade it from uh, sd to, to hd mm-hmm. you know it's just, it's not just the computers it's the drives you know right and the cameras and things um so it was that and then also uh we spent uh, got a lot maybe i will say like 1300 at least uh on explosions <laughs> nice and, and just blood like- and dust <laughs> I mean, like the like the HD high resolution, um, you know, effects and things for the for the new stuff. That's that's awesome, man. And how how are you guys still working on Adobe Premiere one point five? Have you upgraded? Yeah, it's it's now I'm using five point five. Okay, okay, good. So you you've you've come across you've come up come along a little bit more. So that's awesome. And you're using After Effects now for your visual effects. Yeah, of course, yes. Fantastic. Uh, now. This is a uh, at Indie Film Hall, so we talk a lot about marketing and how to get your movie out there. Can you talk to us about how you are actually selling and marketing your films locally? Yeah, uh, in fact, it wasn't also uh, an easy way of doing it because uh, when we first released the movie out, uh, it was not easy for us to sell it uh, because of the you know people we are used to Western movies and Nigerian movies here. And uh, also they knew as uh, an actor here in Uganda was supposed to be a drama actor on stage in theaters. Mm-hmm. And they knew of Abe Muchibi and uh, Mariam Mandagile who are famous here as drama actors mm-hmm. on stage. Right. So when we released the movie, we, went to, we, we had to, to, to go first to the distributors and they were always asking, do you, who do you have in your movies? 
uh, who is famous? Who, who do you think will sell this? Something without a famous person. And then they were saying that, uh, let us try to promote you. You give us that movie for free, something like that. And then we said, sure. no, we, at least we would, uh, uh, we, and we knew they are going to be, you know, put them in their shops and they sit them there. They, they just sit with them there. Right. So we wanted also to promote ourselves here. So what we did, I came back with my marketing team because I met now the actors and actresses, the marketing team. Mm -hmm. uh, after convincing them that uh, if we we are to uh, to be you know to be known, uh, we have to 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 show our movies to the people. You have to take it to the people. Uh, they are the one who are going to become our audience. So we made that what that we 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 went we went made a few copies and we went to the big markets in market market markets in in, in Kampala. Mm -hmm. That is Owino Market and uh, Chiseka Market. We reached there with a few copies. We had like one hundred. Mm -hmm. And we started selling, but people were always asking the same question as distributors were asking. Who do you have? Who is in there? And uh, the, we had no one to, 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 to mention anyway. So people refused to buy. Then we came back and then I, 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 I thought that uh, I got an, uh, an idea mm -hmm. that uh, next day, let us make 300 copies and we give them for free. Uh, meaning that uh, you give you find someone on us maybe a stall selling something uh -huh. you make sure he's the owner of that stall you give her or him a copy for free and tell her or him that tomorrow I will come for my copy and we need that then the next the following day we did that and then they took the copies 300 copies away and uh, we came back the following day with the, uh, with with more than 300 copies because uh -huh. we knew it, we are we are going to sell as you approach the the stall of that person who bought. Who took the copy yesterday? Yeah. Uh, he was always screaming at you. You, you were good. Maybe you were very good. You know, actors and actresses. Why did you tell me this is a movie? And then <laughs> that uh, caught attention. You know, it, it caught attention to the people around there and they asked, "What, what movie are you talking about?" And then we started, you know, distributing the movies, and people were buying. Uh, they, oh. In fact, they created our own. They, became, they started becoming, you know, our own, you know, marketeers. They started, you know, you take this movie, it is good. You take this movie, you believe me. So that is how we started with wow. the Owino market and Chiseka market. And people started, you know, in fact, they started calling after the movie. They used to call. And they, in fact, up to now, they call. Do you have a new movie? Do you have a new movie? It's like that. That's how we started. But we did not stop on uh, with markets, with these two markets. Mm -hmm. We started distributing all over the country, mm -hmm. uh, door to door, man to man, uh, district to district, region to region. That's how wow. we, we, we sell our movies now. That and is... we have taught other companies. So the funny thing is, is that no matter where you are in the world, distributors are still distributors. Who's in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we deal with the exact same question. Like, who's in the movie? There's no movie. I, I'll get, look, give it to me for free. I'll promote you. This is the exact yeah. same story. So I'm fascinated that this is happening in Uganda as, as well as it's happening in but LA. <laughs> but that's also, that's like my story here, meaning... Uh, it's it's all this it's 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 just a, it's a different shade of things that that you say you and I know sure you know even like 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 you were talking earlier about like early Hollywood it's like very much because right. we have to we have to you know but it's, we have to build everything the building just the tripods but even if like a like a little toy if you want to destroy it you can't just buy it they don't exist everything has to has to be built but it's like it's 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 like that it's it's like what's funny to me is how uh, we're not different at all you know. Right. Audiences are audiences, right. and you know, filmmakers are film artists are artists. You know. Yeah. No matter um, where, no matter where you are, I mean, it, 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 uh, and you know, Americans want to see Americans doing stuff on screen, whatever that might be. You know, Ugandans want to see Ugandans doing stuff on screen, either talking to the, about their own cultural experience or things like that, and and they just want good stories at the end of the day. Um, and if they've never seen themselves on screen, even more so, that's why a lot of the independent movement has grown as much as it has, because a lot of people are starting to see themselves uh, on screen and people are, want to see that. Uh, I'm Latino, so I, I'm, I'm Cuban. Uh, so, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, are a lot of Latinos in America that want to see Latinos on screen. That's why a movie like Fast and Furious and, the, and that whole that does so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's Latinos and there's you know African Americans and there's all sorts of different cultures mixed into that, and that's why they're also so cool. And they're also doing very cool stuff. Uh, I was going to say, like you have, you have all that, and then you add some explosions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you have some explosions, some blood. Uh, well, Vin, right. Diesel, Vin Diesel just signed for three more. So if I don't know if you knew that or not, so there'll be three more of those coming. <laughs> so, um, so 
since you have all these movies already in in the Ramon Film Studios library, when are you going to release them all? Yeah, well, we're starting. I mean, it'll be it'll probably be early next year. It's um, the question really is, is uh, film festivals. Mm-hmm. You know, and what we'd like to do is uh, what I want to do is bring Isaac to the West, and I think that uh, you say what the dream I have is that uh, Isaac's first movie he sees in the theater is one of his own. Oh, you know? that would be amazing. Right. With, with, with a full audience that, that already knows him and loves, you know, Alex and loves what he's doing, you know, um, that's my dream. So that, that's the question is, is, um, but then there's questions about visas, uh-huh. um, the cost and things, but that's, that, that's, that's, that's what we're working on. You I know, th- that's I, what we want to see. I hear another Kickstarter campaign coming. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Maybe get get him out of Uganda. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> save Isaac. No, I'm get joking. <laughs> get him out. No. Um, so, where? Um, what future plans do you guys have to get the word out about Wakali Wood and making more, getting more attention to what you guys are doing? Um, well, the big, the big next thing, I think, is uh, the idea of uh, of crowdsourcing uh, an action movie, which means. Uh, like so many people, you know, people that that may be visiting Uganda or say someone like yourself, like like I, I can hear it. Like you want to, you know, you you would if you were here, you'd love to die. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, you know, oh yeah, yeah. Sure. Absolutely. I, get, I mean, there's something about that. And so, uh, the next film, the plan is to kind of crowdsource a Ugandan action movie. And what that means is the story will take place around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you want to be in it, you can do it. You just you know you just, with just your your camera phone. You just take out your iPhone, you shoot yourself dying or running in the streets or, you know, an expl- whatever, being commandos. Um, and you send us the footage, we put it in the film. And what that means is that like, you can be, you know, from, from your home in Norway or Santa Monica mm-hmm. or Arkansas, Spain, uh, you can shoot yourself, send us the footage, and you can become a Ugandan action movie star without ever leaving your home. <laughs> oh, that's um, just, if that's not a Kickstarter incentive, I don't know what is. Exactly. <laughs> And and we're we're testing it. We've already started a bit on. We have some on YouTube, some uh, Ebola clips, uh-huh. where just fans from Indonesia and Vietnam and Northern Ireland. I saw some uh, of those for real. Awesome. Just, are just sending us clips of themselves dying, um, and it works. And we make a little story, put them in, uh, and it, and it's the best. That's that's awesome. Um, now, um, where do you guys see Wakaliwood in five years? <laughs> the truth is. Uh, <laughs> the truth is, I want Wakali to be the biggest uh, action studio in Uganda mm-hmm. and all over the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, we, what we hope is that everyone is, if everyone is part of Wakali it has to be the best action studio in, in the world. Right. So, so you're just gonna you're gonna just try to make as many movies as you can and, and just keep getting that word out and make it the best you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are we are still fighting to see that we make so many movies. Um, you know, I know, and uh, we, we want to make entertaining movies, interesting movies. The people, not only movies, just movies, but we want what people. We want to target what people really want because this is entertainment. Right. Yeah. Your escapism. You just kind of try to watch something to escape, and you know, watching some of uh, some of the clips and stuff from your films, you definitely escape. <laughs> Without yeah, yeah. without and, question, and anyone, you know, yeah, and, and also for but for other filmmakers as well, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, like what we can offer is is something completely unique, Very. you know, <laughs> just completely, and you know, there's filmmakers out there, man, and you know, we could, you know, we could make films together, now partially you, support. Have you. Now, you guys, um, Isaac, are you are you trying to? bring in other directors as well and bringing another the younger generation behind you so this can continue yeah 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 very much i've trained so many editors here okay and directors because uh, in fact everyone who is here can direct a movie now because i always teach everything okay i teach them i give them at that chance of doing everything writing directing uh makeup you know because i think they are filmmakers my idea is that uh, the, the guys i started with are all filmmakers uh that's what i really take as a priority for, for them they it's they are filmmakers they are not film stars they are filmmakers me being mean that uh, even in the future they can make movies they can direct and do everything but apart from that i am also bringing the children the mm-hmm. workers i call mm-hmm. them the workers 
and we are training them, you know, martial arts. We are training them, you know, music. We are training them, you know, how to do, do things like, you know, I'm, I'm, I hopefully I'm, I, I hope to also make them, you know, uh, good editors mm -hmm. because I know we need uh, like 3D. Uh, you know things because that is the generation of of, of today. They they have gone three D. I think these children will be good if I teach them three D, which I uh, of which I I know I have idea of. I'm not very good in three D, but I have idea. I can teach. I think I can teach them right. uh, the way I taught myself. If I teach them a little, and some of them are my children, I know they will they will they will basically they will very quickly understand and will also continue you know teaching themselves. So I'm always encouraging young generation to come in, even not only uh, Wakaliwood, but all over the country. Uh, if I get a chance to speak to young filmmakers, I always, uh, you know, give them courage that they should not uh, think that uh, they, they should not wait for government to give them money. They should not wait for, you know, foreign aid. No, no, no. They can start today because everything has got, has got a, a beginning. We don't need to wait. Let the money find us on our way. And uh, that money, we can get it from, you know, our works, what we do, or what we pro our products. We don't need to, to, you know, to beg too much. Uh, if you have products, if I have a movie and people can buy it, I can enjoy it, mm -hmm. can contribute to the, the next, you know, project. That's what I, I always encourage them. Instead of, you know, making a movie and then keep it under your bed, uh, you put it on the, on the market. Mm -hmm. Try it yourself. Because we have already created a little market here in Uganda. Mm -hmm. They can also do what? They can also go to the market and talk to the market people there. They, can, they are ready to buy. So it's like that. I'm encouraging other uh, filmmakers. I think uh, Uganda has got creative you know, directors and you know, editors and cameramen. Mm -hmm. We can make it. That, that's awesome. That's very, very awesome. Okay. Um, now, uh, one, one side question, and then I'll have a last couple. How are we doing on battery power? I think we have 10 minutes. Okay, so great. Um, real quick, Isaac, what is the camera you're using right now? It is Panasonic. I don't know what uh, the specification is, but uh, it's Panasonic. It's, it's a solid state. Oh, it's a solid uh, state. So it's like the HVX yeah. 200 or something? Yeah, it's, it's the next generation of, I think, it is next to VHS. Uh, to the, the Mini DV, got it. Got it. Um, so this is a question I ask all of my guests, so I, this is for both of you. What are your top three favorite films of all time? And Isaac, and you, Isaac, you can either tell me the storied version that you've never seen the movie that you really liked or the actual movie you've seen. Right, that's funny, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come again. What's your favorite film you have never seen? <laughs> yes. What is your favorite like film story. you've never seen? Yeah, the story version. You can either do the storied version or real movies that you've actually seen in, in person. Up to you. What I've never seen? I don't know. <laughs> have you seen Commando? you actually seen Commando, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of my best. That's what I was going to tell you that uh, Commando was, is, is one of my best and Presence Man is one of the, the three. Okay. Uh, so... And uh, this, uh, how would they call it? Uh, this guy, when they destroy the White House, there are two versions, but they're all good for me. White, White House well, Down and uh, Olympus Has Fallen. Oh, both of those. They are the same yeah. movies. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they, are, the they, are the, they are the same movies. <laughs> uh, also, there is the jungle. And uh, I like the jungle because the guy used to shoot at the, uh, you know, the, 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 the dead body was also, you, you could see the blood coming out of the dead body. <laughs> That's, that's amazing. <laughs> I love your sound effects. They're, they're wonderful. <laughs> How about you, Alan? What, what are your three favorites? Um, you know, I tell you, it, it, what's funny with me with this is that, uh, you, know, I, I'm, you know, I grew up on a suburbs of Long Island. Uh -huh. So, yeah, you know, I love action and all this, but I, but I wasn't like crazy about it. You uh -huh. know, I mean, I like it. I've seen everything, you know, Predator, Terminal, of sure, course. Sure. Um, but I wasn't like crazy about it. But, but Isaac makes you love that. You know, like Isaac really makes you love all that stuff, like complete, like even much, much more. And he starts seeing things, you know, but if you were to ask my favorite films, like when I, like the film that, that I watch even here, I had to download it and I watch every so often is, uh, is local hero, which is the Scottish oh, yeah. film, yeah, I local very hero. small film. Yeah. It's really, yeah, it's, it's, it's really great. And it's just, you know, it's about this guy who's from Texas and he works at the oil company and he has to go to Northern Scotland to buy the, buy the village for an oil refinery. Uh, -huh. uh of course, he doesn't want to do it. He falls in love with the village. But meanwhile, the village wants to sell because they want the money. But it's just this very charming 
uh, story about this guy who, who comes from a completely different part of the world uh, and falls in love with everyone um, and becomes part of their life. And, and then as, that was always my favorite film. And then when I look at myself and what's happening here, you know, right? It's very, it's, it's it's spooky. It's good to, <laughs> it's frightening. You, you're living in your own local hero. How like the same thing has happened to me? Yeah, I think so. Well, they're all they're, you know. Everyone here, I think, is is like a, they say it, but like they're they're like real life action heroes. So, um, you know, in in the ver- walk around, in, in the ver- like with, just, yeah. um, Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just saying like like. Well, I, f- I see, and they, they talk about it here, like like all the, the the actors and Isaac and everyone here. It's like they're all real life uh, action heroes. They're seen that way by the children in the village. Oh, but like yeah. like this whole story of what's happening here with what Hollywood with these guys who you know, you know have really basically nothing but are building these at least helicopters and jibs and making these movies that are being enjoyed around the world when they were never meant to. They were just meant for the for here. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like it's the true story of what's happening behind this is, is an action movie, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's just beginning, you it's know, this just, is like, this yeah. is like the first act, you know, of, of what may be coming. Yeah. No, yeah. Qu- no question about it. No question about it. What you guys are doing That's over there. Is- <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great answer. It's probably this one of the best answers I've ever heard. This, this is my favorite movie. The one we're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just hope I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> so um Isaac okay. Isaac uh last question it, it, when this movie of 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 what Hollywood gets made because there's going to be a Hollywood adaptation one day of this movie of of like the making of of, of what Hollywood who's going to play you and who's going to play Alan yeah, who wants to play you Isaac they're going to make a movie of what Hollywood <laughs> is it Good Denzel question. Washington <laughs> is it who's who's playing you <laughs> yeah I don't know Will Smith I don't know. Jean-Claude Van Damme who's doing it <laughs> but Chuck Norris is the best for me. Anyway. <laughs> well, obviously Chuck Norris is the best. Everyone knows that. Even here, everyone know everywhere. Everyone knows understands how how badass Chuck Norris is. There's no question. <laughs> and Alan, that's right. I think Chuck Norris should play you, and just straight for no questions. He no lives que- here, you know. He's building, it just and it, no questions asked. It's just, just Chuck Norris being Isaac. That would just be pre- yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, just have him roll right into the part. There's not even an explanation of why Chuck Norris is in yeah. Uganda no. or his family. Nothing. No. It's just play. Yeah, he's like, we have to make action movies. Everyone thinks he's crazy. But he's like, no, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know how great would that be? That would you know? be amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna send out the word to Chuck now and see if we can make this happen. <laughs> He should come. Oh man, could you imagine? I mean, Chuck Chuck would literally be Jesus Christ if he walked <laughs> over there. Bro. Oh, no, you, you don't know. Honestly, we, there's a one of the movies that we're working on. It's called Eaten Alive in Uganda. Okay, and uh, they think I'm Chuck Norris because I have longer hair, and so they have to fight me and eat me because it's Chuck Norris and it's Chuck Norris. You know, <laughs> I even fight um, Bruce Yu in it. Who's Uganda's Bruce Lee? Of course, I've, yes. Um, you can't can't make this up. Just like 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 in the final scene from Enter the Dragon, you know. Oh, the two face off. Yes. Do you have a hairy chest though? If you don't have a hairy chest, you can't play out. You can't play uh, Chuck Norris. <laughs> well, actually, I have um, I have a, like a five foot. Two, I'm six one. I have like a five foot two African kung fu stunt double <laughs> in in white face. No. And if you don't know no. me, I, you just look at my pork by by profile photo on Facebook. Oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> You can't write this stuff. Seriously, you cannot write On this that note. <laughs> On that note, That's, uh, I mean, you're saying like, like if there was a movie and like if my character is in it, it's it's got to be the guys from Shaun of the Dead, man. Oh, that's of course. who I want. Yes, Nick Frost or something, or like James Franco, you know, and all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. Well, oddly, James, you know? oddly enough, James Franco would probably do it. He does everything. <laughs> He's in every movie now. <laughs> so, um. Last question, guys. Where can people find you and uh, support what you guys are doing? Yeah, it's just it's Wakaliwood dot com, um, and what right now we have a, we have a Patreon account uh, for Wakaliwood, and uh, it's just it, it's very simple. I mean, it could just be a, like two dollars a month kind of thing. So mm-hmm. you get you'll get behind the scenes action, but that also goes to support um, helps keep us going. And then very soon, uh, as we for the holidays, we'll start having uh, the T-shirts and posters available in the West, and also the the first batch. These will be the first 
uh, DVDs. We have Captain Alex available in the West, mm -hmm. uh, signed and numbered first 500 and printed by Isaac and his family here in the slum uh, will be available internationally. Oh, that's for great. our fans. So that's oh, coming. That's that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Well, guys, thank you again so, so, so much for doing this interview. Uh, I'm I'm going to be one of your biggest uh, supporters and getting the word out about Wakali. Would I love what you guys are doing? So uh, you're absolute yeah, inspiration. Yeah, we have to kill you, man. <laughs> yes. We have to kill you. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. I don't know how to take that. It's, uh... <laughs> no, no, you... hey, I want to kill you in a it's good way. It's better to die with us. Die with us, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to do it, it's better to do it with the professionals. Obviously, obviously, obviously. Oh, by the way, is there going to be a sequel, or has there been a sequel to Alex, uh, Captain Alex? Yeah, we, we hope so, but uh, in the future, we don't. <laughs> not now, not now. In the future, in the, future it, it, the fans, yeah, yeah. The, the fans demand it. Isaac, you must do a sequel. It should be a trilogy. It should be an, a, a Captain Alex trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to see. I want to see the Tiger Mafia. And the commandos as children. That's what I want to see the flashbacks <laughs> when they're eight years old <laughs> with revenge and flying helicopters and blowing up. Like God. how it all started. Uh, guys, thanks again, man. I really appreciate you being on the show. Oh, thank I you, Alex. You, yeah. After that episode, I do not want to hear any excuses from any filmmakers out there about, I don't have this or I don't have that to make my movie. I don't want to hear any of it because if there's a will, there's a way. And Isaac is just the perfect example of that. So I want to thank Isaac again for being on the show and dropping some major inspiration bombs on the tribe today. If you want to get links to anything we talked about in this episode, as well as to see some trailers and some videos and some great documentaries on Wakaliwood and Isaac and what he's doing, head over to filmtrepreneur.com forward slash zero zero two. And if you haven't already, please head over to filmbizpodcast.com. That's filmbizpodcast.com and leave us a good review on iTunes. It really helps us out a lot with the rankings. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the show. I'm going to be putting out new episodes every single week for the foreseeable future without question. Thank you again so much. And I really hope this episode helps you on your film entrepreneur path. It, it really is an inspiring tale, and there is a way. And man, if you have no other way to do your art, then you have to figure out how to make money with it, like Isaac has. Man, it is inspiring as all hell. So thank you again, Isaac. And as always, the power is in your hands. Be a film entrepreneur. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Film Entrepreneur podcast at filmtrepreneur.com. Choose Empire and get free or low cost benefits for the whole family. Pay little to nothing from baby's first checkup to filling your prescriptions all the way to yearly dental exams. Trust Empire Health Plans for your family. Click or tap the banner to learn more. To learn more about applying for health insurance, including Medicaid, Child Health Plus, Essential Plan, and Qualified Health Plans through New York State of Health, the official health plan marketplace, visit www.nystateofhealth.ny.gov or call 1-855-355-5777. Choose Empire and get free or low-cost benefits for the whole family. Pay little to nothing from baby's first checkup to filling your prescriptions all the way to yearly dental exams. Trust Empire Health Plans for your family. Click or tap the banner to learn more. To learn more about applying for health insurance, including Medicaid, Child Health Plus, Essential Plan, and Qualified Health Plans through New York State of Health, the official health plan marketplace, visit www.nystateofhealth.ny.gov or call 1-855-355-5777.